Having made his debut in the original Borderlands game, Roland in this franchise has served as a figure that everyone could strive to be more like. He's looked upon as a beacon of hope and guidance. So I figured it was time I give you the history of Roland. Roland was born on the planet of Promethea, the world where the very first vault was uncovered. Due to this, the planet as a whole, the Atlas Corporation, and their military, the Crimson Lance, gained unbelievable amounts of attention and fame. As a kid, Roland saw this and aspired to be like one of them one day, creating his own armor and drawing his own maps. It was a dream that he worked towards and actually accomplished. He grew up and eventually became part of the Crimson Lance. He rose up the ranks, gaining the respect of many around him, earning the title of Sergeant. Now, per usual, as I've been doing with the original Vault Hunters, I go through their origin comics that were released as they serve as some of the only backstory we've gotten on these characters. Roland's origin comic was released on September 18th, 2012. Despite his initial drive to pursue his dream of joining the military, much like everything, there are those around you who aren't as noble. Roland became suspicious of his superior Higgins, and so he stole a confidential file he wasn't supposed to see. He uncovered that Higgins had been siphoning money from the Atlas Corporation and intended on pinning the blame on Roland and his squad, which would obviously result in the execution of them all. But despite learning this, he hadn't yet come up with a plan of what to do with this information. He had a lot of friends from a lot of places, but none of them as high or as powerful as Higgins. The best he could do for now was bide his time. But while on Pandora, Higgins had actually uncovered the files Roland had taken were missing, and he was quick to action. While Roland very wisely tried to play dumb, saying he had no idea what he was talking about, Higgins knew he was lying. So he sent them to a trap. Claiming there was a job that needed to be done in a place called the Collapsed Valley, Roland and his team were sent out to deal with these pests. But in reality, it was them who were the pests that needed to be dealt with. One by one, each of Roland's team were executed by Higgins and the other Lance soldiers until Roland was the last one standing. He chose to leave him there to be food for the Crumblers, expecting him to die, but swearing on his life, Roland vows to hunt him down however long it takes. As you'd expect, Roland survived the Crumblers and began his hunt for Higgins. After about 714 cycles on Pandora, he tracked him down and killed him. He was obviously incapable of returning back to the Lance, not that he'd want to, and so he sought after the other dream he had as a child, vault hunting. A bounty was then placed on his head for desertion and murder of a Crimson Lance officer. Roland then waited at a bus stop, and that's when he was picked up by Marcus. Roland was the first on the bus, and one by one he was introduced to Lilith, Mordecai, and finally Brick. All joined in the common goal to open a vault. Roland was obviously fully aware of the control Atlas held over Pandora. Having been the only one of the four who led in the past, Roland served as the leader amongst the group. And this is where the events of Borderlands 1 take place. The group venture all across Pandora, guided by Angel, meeting the residents of the planet like Zed, Scooter, Tannis, and Helena Pierce, all while uncovering the mystery of Pandora's vault. Commandant Steele and her forces of the Crimson Lance soldiers stand in direct opposition to the main characters. Unfortunately, due to the structure of Borderlands' storytelling, Roland being ex-Crimson Lance doesn't come into play at any point. Together, they all manage to collect the various pieces of the vault key and open the Destroyer's feeding cage, fighting off the monster that came out. The DLCs would happen as well with his involvement, but most importantly, the takedown of General Knox. Once he is killed, Atlas chooses to abandon all of the Crimson Lance on Pandora, as it is a lost cause. These events were ones to celebrate. Both he and Lilith had grown closer through these experiences and began dating. In fact, at some point in time, they chose to take a vacation up to Pandora's moon, Elpis, just the two of them. And this is where the events of the pre-sequel take place. While the two were just hoping for a nice, peaceful, and relaxing visit, they wound up getting roped into something much larger. Moxie had pointed a bunch of other Vault Hunters in their direction to help her ex-boyfriend, Jack, stop the Lost Legion. Initially, they tried to decline getting involved, but they soon learned the severity of the situation. 
The Lost Legion was intending to destroy Elpis to prevent its use of the vault, so not only would all the residents of Elpis die, but also without its moon, Pandora would be affected as well. So for now, Roland and Lilith decided to assist Jack and his team, but once both he and Lilith witness him killing innocent scientists, Roland forms a new plan. While Lilith tries to immediately take action, Roland decides they should bide their time. He consults Moxie about this, and together they all inevitably sabotage the Eye of Helios and betray Jack. By the time the pre-sequel ends, Jack has sworn revenge on all of those who betrayed him. He takes over Hyperion and immediately starts laying siege to Pandora. Not wanting any harm to come to the planet, as he's grown to like it and its residents, Roland decides to form a group to fight back against Hyperion. Recruiting former Crimson Lance soldiers who were left behind by Atlas, Roland, Lilith, Mordecai, and Brick form the Crimson Raiders. They would begin recruiting all of those who wish to join them and do something in the protection of Pandora. This is a message to any Crimson Lance left on Pandora. General Knox is dead, and knowing the Lance, they'll more likely cut their losses and leave you here than send an extraction ship. So unless you want to starve to death out there, you got two options. One, you become bandits. Two, you join me in protecting the people of Sanctuary. I can offer you food, shelter, and the chance to fight for something real, something meaningful. A chance I know the Atlas Corporation never gave you. Roland, out. Lancemen, attention! I only have one question to ask of all of you. One question. Just a few years ago, we were enemies, but that time has passed. As glad as I am to see you all in Sanctuary, I know you wouldn't have come if you had any other option. I know how bad things are out there. I know how Jack's army has swept across this planet like a sandstorm, ripping apart everything in its way. When I joined the Crimson Lance years ago, they told me I'd be fighting to protect those who couldn't protect themselves. But you all know as well as I do, that was a lie. But this fight against Hyperion, it isn't. If we don't band together, if we can't protect this city from Jack's army, then we're done for. I am Roland, and I only have one question to ask. Are you with me? <laughs> this responsibility fell right into what Roland was familiar and comfortable with. And because of that, he broke up with Lilith. He was never the expressive type, but that was never really the problem. Now, he just felt like he had too much on his plate to concern himself with a relationship. It's also important to note that through his ventures on Pandora, he met a young girl named Tina. He took on a very fatherly role to her as she's constantly looked up to him. They wound up saving each other on various occasions. One such adventure was against a man named General Rancid. Anyway, the Crimson Raiders were initially stationed at New Haven, but one day one of the residents sold out the town and they were attacked by Wilhelm, who almost killed them all. The Raiders were forced to retreat to Sanctuary. If you can hear this, and you're sane enough to understand what I'm saying, head to Sanctuary. I don't care what Jack has told you, or how well defended you think you are. The Hyperion Army is coming to wipe you out. If you want to survive, you get a gun, you come to Sanctuary, and you join the Crimson Raiders. Brick, after the fall of New Haven, was captured, but he managed to escape where he proceeded to hunt down the traitor who sold out the town, and ripped his skull open. Due to this excessive force, Roland kicked Brick out of the Raiders. And this would be Roland's role up to the events of Borderlands 2. While leading the Raiders in the fight against Handsome Jack, he wound up getting captured by some bloodshot bandits who were seeking to claim the bounty on his head. While they have some troubles trying to cash in that bounty, Roland actually found himself being saved by a new group of Vault Hunters who have a bone to pick with Jack. Throughout the campaign of Borderlands 2, he helps lead the characters around, re-recruiting old allies such as Mordecai and Brick, but he inevitably finds himself going out on a mission in person to claim the vault key Angel had in her possession. While they are capable of fighting their way into her control chamber and putting an end to her life per her request, this was unfortunately where Roland met his end. Jack just lost his only way to awaken the warrior. We got the vault key, but this isn't over yet. We gotta find Jack and take him out. Lilith, take the vault key to Tennis. We have to check. So. I'm gonna. Language. 
What's that saying? Don't pick a fight with a man with nothing left to lose. See, I'm gonna show you just how much you have to lose. And I got the most powerful siren on the planet to do it with. Lilith, kill the Vault Hunter. We've got a date to keep with the warrior. The rest of the characters without him but inspired by him would go on to defeat Handsome Jack. A statue was later erected in his honor, with a small settlement being named after him, called Roland's Rest. Another fun fact about Roland is that he had actually done two tours of Promethea with General Knox. Knox doesn't have a great outlook on him because Roland was a deserter. Also, within Lilith's Firehawk lair, you could see Roland's profile and it says that he was homeschooled sometime in the year 2850, giving us one of the only actual dates and time frame within the game. But for now, that does it for the history of Roland. If there are any other characters you'd like to see me do the history of, then be sure to let me know in the comments below, and until next time, I'll see you in the next video.